EES is pronounced EASE and is an acronym for Engineering Equation Solver. The last couple of videos talked about lookup tables and how you can manipulate data within a lookup table using equations. This video is going to look at how you can retrieve data from a lookup table, do some operations on it within EASE, and then finally store the result. In a typical situation, you're going to have a set of data that you may need to post-process using ease. So for example, here's a set of temperature and pressure measurements that were made for air. If the post-processing calculations are extensive, then you might want to retrieve the data from a row in a table like this, use that data as inputs for some calculations in an ease program that might be um, long and, and complicated, and then save the result of these calculations. So as a very simple example, maybe I want to compute the density of the air associated with these data. So I can use the lookup command to retrieve numerical data from the lookup table. And the calling protocol for the lookup command is shown here. All right, the first argument is a string uh, table name that contains the name of the table of interest. And then row is the number of the row in the table. And column is either the number or the string name of the column. So for example, the commands here We'll read the temperature from row 1, column 1 of the lookup table, name data, and the pressure from row 1, column 2. So I can enter the ideal gas constant, and then I can convert the temperature from Celsius to Kelvin, and finally I can compute the density. If I want to do this calculation for every row in the lookup table and then store the result, one way of doing this is to create a parametric table that has the same number of rows as the lookup table. And I'll put columns in the parametric table for all the variables that I'd like to keep, in this case, uh, absolute temperature, pressure, and density. And now when I run the table, I see that the value in every row of the table is the same because I'm always pulling the data from row one of the lookup table to do the calculations. So this is where the command or the function table run hashtag is useful. So table run hashtag returns the current run of the parametric table when I'm running a parametric table. So if I change the row number in these lookup calls from 1 to table run hashtag, then what you're going to see is that when I solve the parametric table, it will be filled in properly. Right? These are the densities at each of the measured pressures and temperatures for each row in that lookup table. Now I can save this parametric table uh, in a variety of ways, one way being just as a lookup table that I could reread should I want to do that. Another way of doing this kind of operation would be to use an array. So for example, here I've loaded the same data table called data, and I'll use the function uh, nLookupRows to determine the number of rows in the table, and that's going to let me set up a duplicate loop that goes through each of these rows. Within the loop, I'm going to use the lookup command again to pull out the value of temperature and pressure in each of these rows, and I'll use that then to fill in the elements of the arrays T sub C and P. So once these arrays have been populated, I can operate on them in uh, whatever way I choose. In this case, I'm going to set up a second duplicate loop, and within this duplicate loop, I'm going to convert each of these temperatures in Celsius to Kelvin using the convert temp command, and then calculate the density associated with each element. and the results shown here. Now I can save this array table as a lookup table for future reference. Um, alternatively, in the professional version of these, I can use the uh, dollar copy to lookup directive to save these results that I just generated in a lookup table. The basic calling protocol for the dollar copy to lookup directive is shown here. The parameters uh, table name and column name are the uh, strings that specify the name of the table and uh, the name of the column where the variables are going to be written into the lookup table. Uh, again, these parameters can be strings or they could be string variables. Uh, in addition, the units for the column can be specified by following the column name with a backslash and then the units. Uh, the value start row here is the row in which the first data item will be written and that can either be an integer or a variable and then every additional item in this list is going to be written in a successive row. So there's a couple of optional flags that you can see here at the start of the directive. 
Uh, the forward slash T flag indicates that a new table uh, with the name here uh, in, in the table name string should be created if it doesn't already exist. Uh, the forward slash C flag indicates that a new column with the name column name, the string column name, should be created if it doesn't already exist. And then finally, the flag forward slash R indicates that additional rows should be added if necessary in order to write all of the data in the list into the column. So here I'm going to use the uh, dollar copy to look up directive with the forward slash C flag to add the column density to the lookup table data that already exists. I'll use the backslash after the name density to specify that the units are kilogram per meter cubed. Uh, the first row to fill in is row 1 and then the list itself is going to be all the elements in the array uh, row using the array range uh, notation. So if I solve now and go look at the lookup table, uh, you'll see that uh, there's an additional column now that has all the calculated densities. So the uh, lookup dollar sign command we didn't talk about here, but it does the same thing as the lookup command, except for that you can use it to pull strings out of a table rather than numerical values. Um, the lookup command can also be used to actually write data to a lookup table, but only within functions and procedures, which we will talk about in a subsequent video. Uh, these are described in Chapter 3 of Mastering Ease. So this is one of a series of tutorials meant to describe the operation of the Ease software. If you'd like to get more information about Ease, uh, obtain the software, or access more of these tutorials, please go to the website fchart.com. These tutorials are excerpted from the book Mastering Ease, which can also be obtained from the FChart website.